Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of Hannibal is at the Gate. You are here with your host, Sharvi. I also have my friend Ali here at the gate. Say what's up to the people. Hold up, family. Hold up. Hold up. And today we have a uh, special guest for you guys. I have my friend Seven Bomar on the line. Say what's up to the people, Seven. Wholeness, everyone. It's great to be here on the Hannibal at the Gate show. Obviously, I'm super excited about this transmission that's going to come forth today, and we're ready to take it there. So definitely wholeness. Absolutely. Let's go ahead and take it there, Seven. Um, Can you tell the people a little bit more about yourself and what it is that you do or what you bring to the reality? For sure. I mean, just to to bring a a brief introduction of myself, obviously today the context of the conversation is going to be deep levels of spirituality, uh, metaphysics, even physicality, because I don't think you can really separate the two when you're really discussing deep levels and deep matters of our life and our experience here on the planet. And just a little background information on me is that I've been raised in a household of studying spiritual knowledge since I was young, but I also have a pretty extensive uh, experience in real life, you know, in the streets, in the corporate offices, you name it. So I have that, that span of uh, experience that has brought me to the full understanding of what we would sometimes call higher things and how that works and how it can work for us in our expansion throughout this existence, it, answering some of the big questions such as where did we come from and also where are we going when we leave here after death and just really addressing the things that every person I feel is going to have to address at some point in their life but not waiting to do that when maybe we're older and out of our vigor but at a, a point where we have the strength and the energy and the wherewithal to penetrate through what is necessary to find the answers and I feel like that each person really must do that for themselves. So what I'm here to do today is to give the best advice that I can at not only how I achieve that, but how also another may be able to achieve that in 2016. So that's another big part of what I have to deliver is something that works with you in real time to what you're dealing with right now, but also digs into the history, ancestry, even before time in order to make the connections. So that way we get the entire unified field and we gain our roots, which are most necessary if we're going to go off on some kind of ascent of full discovery of who we are. And so once again, I actually have quite a few networks. Um, I have AstroQuest, which is AstroQuest.com. Um, it's a platform that we share this information and have been doing so for the last six years in real time. So there's videos, there's audios, you name it. And then there's also Secret Energy, which is the world's first open source spirituality platform. And what that's designed to do is to give all the materials and also a community of individuals that are capable and some just learning all the way to what we say neophyte or a beginner all the way to adept to cracking through this information at whatever level that you're on. And so there's different things that we have going. We look for a total solution, a lifestyle in which a person is able to begin to make that change. I can't really say change and crossover because realistically this incorporates with everything that you're doing. So it's something that offers Mm -hmm. in every aspect something for you to begin to better yourself with. And for me personally, I've not only been on the spiritual pursuit all my life, um, but into different levels of that and examined many of the spiritual traditions that are out today, even immersed myself in the ones that I felt were um, of the subject matter itself, and then started to collect a lot of experience and also information based on what we're actually dealing with in this realm of the unknown, which some call spirituality. Absolutely. Um, You've been very instrumental for my path uh, to self-knowledge and self-discovery, so I'm going to have to give you honors um, because I came across your website, Resistance 2010, and that was actually back in 2011, and I didn't understand anything on the website at all. <laughs> and I was like, wow, this is way over my head, but I'm intrigued, you know. Um, and then I actually had to run a gambit, so I kind of got involved in, you know, different so-called spiritual walks to, you know, just try to get more self-knowledge, and I ended up in a cult. And it was really one of your transmissions that actually helped me to wake myself up and realize that I was, you know, I was never going to uh, elevate myself or to, you know, ascend if I kept going, you know, in this dualistic plane. Like, 
if I kept basically sorting myself, you know, and I fell into a lot of traps. I think we all have to do that, you know what I'm saying? But the major trap, I think that um, people of color fall into, (laughs) black people, is the whole black power trap. And it took me a minute to get out of that trap, but it was a transmission that I was listening um, from you that you were talking about how it was more so of, like, different colors or, you know, different colors of the spectrum, and it's not necessarily, you know, race against race because we're all the human race. So I really appreciate if you could expand upon that for our listeners because we do have, you know, mostly black listeners. Well, certainly. I mean, I, I, you know, I always, um, because we even talked about this before on our previous call, so I, of course, even thought more about the question itself and to bring it into present context. I always talk about just, you know, let's bring, bring it present and talk about, like, what's happening right now, you know, what's inciting us. And, you know, it gives us a lot of, um, a backdrop on exactly how the reality runs itself off conflict, but also how conflict can be seen almost as the ultimate unit of energy. Like everything is into some kind of friction or content, uh, conflict in order to bring energy. Gasoline does it. Uh, anything that's explosive does it. You know, even the whole act of our creation is a big part of that. So we're actually in a tense ball forth in duality. So how that duality is really expressed to us and whether we can ever neutralize du- dualistic fields actually determines whether we ever able to excel into an entirely different part of our consciousness. So that actually brings us into more of the question back on ourselves, deeper questions like, well, what body is primarily uh, the one running what we think, what we do, and what we believe ourselves to be? And if you study any spiritual tradition, that's you know, at least somewhat authentic, not really the modern day traditions, but many of the ancient traditions you hear and learn about be, not being the body, actually being more of a, a spirit. And then once you come into full identification, being connected to a much more grander force known as the soul. And our connection always existing as that, whether we can come into realization of that or not. And what comes in between us in that realization are these bodies or vehicles or vessels or states of consciousness. So being black or being white, Chinese, whatever, is indeed one of those and what I would say to anyone, because if you happen to be born in a Chinese body, you'll definitely believe that Chinese are the original people. So if you're born in a white body, you're generally going to get the same thing. It's actually a phenomenon of our psyche of supremacy. But what also happens is, is that each of those races will agree that whatever it is that they're claiming to be their, uh, embodying, them, that they, whatever they're claiming to be embodied by, they claim that as their power as in black power, white power, Chinese power. They probably call it something else. But what I'm saying is, yeah. is that when we start to speak of power, we also learn from the, from the deepest teachers that power does corrupt. So when we look into alchemy and we look into the deeper systems, we find that actually the poison and the cure are often, and in most cases, together. This is like a snake bite. If you get bit by a snake, then what must be used as an anti-venom is actually that same venom, but taken into a different formula. So it's the same thing then that if if black is my power and I let that power corrupt me or power use me to believe and to think things that are not true, to set myself in positions that I'm not haven't really gained or earned, then that's something that I've done. So that becomes the, the, the foreground of it. The deeper part is, of course, in any of these deeper spiritual traditions, they also teach about that the goal is, is to actually get in control of your spirit and then merge with the soul. So in that aspect, the body is often never even really mentioned. You have to maintain the body. You have to keep the body basically from from destroying itself in most cases, eating the wrong things, etc. But it always talks about how you need to go into another stage of your consciousness, which actually doesn't have this black and white, brown, yellow color situation, more so it has the vibratory frequencies. It has things that go much deeper than skin. So it's deeper than the skin. And so I I would also challenge anyone to, of course, if they feel that they have some type of connection and that is around their race (laughs) to manifest the power and the balance that's truly within that and to do something that is really admired 
and really respected by those who may share that with you. So I don't think that there's a problem with someone saying that, hey, as far as my biorhythm and my ilk and my family, this is how I'm going to represent that. And if you're doing something that's productive and explosive, but if you're just talking about something that's going to make you feel in your mind is going to elevate you over someone else, and there's really no activity behind that, then you can watch and see that go on quite a bit. Hmm. Okay. So I like how you explain that from uh, soul to spirit to body. So would you say that, like, the level or I guess your vibration um, of your spirit is going to determine what type of body that you encompass when you're here in the physical? It's going to determine how much uh, of what access you're using of other bodies because if, even to speak of if you're in the physical then you're using the physical body but when it comes to getting something else done you may not choose the physical body like if you wanted to go to the depths of the ocean you're not going to jump in the physical body per se and do that but that doesn't mean that you can't get there because there is a spirit body that is impervious to things such as gravity and it has the ability to transcend the space and time that's necessary for you to get to that for, to that goal so it's also about being objective driven like many people that are buying into the race wars are in every tense receptive. They're, they're just looking to receive. They're just looking for input in a tense. And what that does is it puts them in a position to have the back and forth volley of just debating. Because mind you, any of these thoughts and ideas that we have cannot be confused with action. And so this is the thing with, with when you really examine the universe, we find that the universe is actually not really interested in what we learn in the, tri- in the strictest tense to like you reading something in a book and then like you now know one plus one or whatever. It's strictly functioning on experience. And the reason for that is, is obviously if I talk to you about having a child and I have a book about having a child, it's nothing like actually you having your own child and taking care of that child. So you can't even compare the two. So I think there's a lot of talking going on and a lot of people saying and claiming certain things, but when it comes direct to action with that particular even race or group of people or whatever, you find they're very low on action. So then, like basically if we have all this power, because of course I'm melodin dominant, if I have all this power, where is that power? How am I using that power? And what am I doing with that power? And because that once you start getting into that realm, then you already start realizing the game behind the colors, how when you shine light into a prism, it comes out with actually nine colors, not seven. Then in those nine colors, which is this commitment system, at the two opposite poles, you have what most people call the absence of color. Like if you say, well, if someone says, well, what is white? And they define that in school as the absence of color. Even when they say what is black, they define that as the absence of color. But quite the contrary, white and black are colors. Clear is the absence of color. So what we find is in the reality, there's seldom a neutral. There's, it has the reality being binary or, or they're attempting to make the reality binary, meaning dualistic. It seems to always find the poles, and this is what anyone you talk to, because you can go talk to a KKK member, they're going to give you 180 degrees of what someone that is deep into black power is talking about, whether they want to argue about it or not or say you're wrong for saying that or whatever. That's immaturity when you do that kind of thing. If you can't accept the reality of what's going on, then you can never be present. But when we start becoming present, we start seeing that this this is a polar opposition, and we need to find neutral because our ancestors were familiar with the neutral because that's what gave them their power, harmony, is also another word for neutral. So this means that if you're not harmonic and you're always in the dualistic channel, you're just going to burn up a lot of the energy. True, you have a use because you're fuel. (laughs) And in the strictest tense, you're fuel for the reality, you're fuel for whoever is puppet mastering you, you're you're basically a battery for real. And because that's what conflict really is. So it has a use. And this is what I think that sometimes becomes a little bit difficult for people to realize is that what the universe has done is it's actually found a place for everyone. So when you get on a universal level, you're not trying to eliminate something because it's got a certain skin color or even trying to elevate 
something because because of the skin color. What you're saying is, is that there's a formula going on here, and I must keep this formula in balance. So let's take ourselves into that grander state of consciousness, let's say on a universal state or quantum state. We're not excluding uranium because it's dangerous. We're not excluding the sun or hydrogen because these are highly explosive, volatile agents. So, you know, when you get down to the humans and the colors, now you're just like, man, are you micromanaging and you're being petty? Because on a grander scale, even some things that will burn your face off and melt your car is not even being considered as possibly maybe one of the enemies, you see? So in the higher levels of thoughts, what you find is you find someone is trying to find the reason and uh, of that, of whatever they're examining, like what is the purpose of this? Why is why is this molecule have to be here? Or where? because when the closer you get to the realization of that, not the denial, but the realization of its existence and its purpose, the closer you get to the mind of the designer. And this designer, Ooh. not to even set up to there's a pedestal to their god or anything, this is you back in the position of when you're in total realization of your creative and originative forces. So only thing that duality is going to do is take you further away from that. It's like unpacking more of the Russian dolls. What this is really about is finding that harmonization point to collapse it all because truthfully, when you get into really any high state of thought, you should be a high state of consciousness frequency, excuse me, you should actually first be devoid of thought meaning that you're actually not doing what people call thinking because you can't even get into the zone with, run, with, with what runs your thinking. When a basketball player is in the zone, he's not thinking, okay, I'm going to shoot this ball. It's got to be this much tip on it, and then and there's no thinking going on. They just get in that zone, and they throw it, and it goes in. They throw it, and it goes in. It's only the moment that they think about, hey, I wonder if that one's going to go in, that it doesn't go in. And we're familiar with that in meditation. We're familiar with that with many teaching systems that talk about quieting the brain, also known as the monkey mind, because the, the part of the mind that's actually scared to leave the body, because think about this, like getting even outside the body into another vehicle for most people is way off limits. Even the process of doing that, not talking about it, remember the universe is not interested in the conversations, but actually experiencing and doing it, the first time you start feeling the body uh, disconnect from the other part of you, also known as the spirit, the, mo- the first thing that happens is fear. Oh, my God, am I going to die? And that fear, that thought, puts you back into the body. So how can anyone ever think that someone is re- that's really body-orientated, like, yo, this is my body, look at me in the mirror, I'm this, is ever going to be able to get to that next vehicle? <laughs> they are so in tune with this one vehicle, literally in tune, I am only this, and have identified themselves as that, that they can't, let go enough to get into what is really like a neutral so that the body feels comfortable with releasing the spirit. Okay. And the reason why let's let, now let's analyze that deeper. Why is the body so uncomfortable with releasing the spirit? Because it has been taught through, you know, all of what we're experiencing in life that if the spirit leads, that it will die. Spirit, Spirit is also synonymous with fire. So generally when the spirit leaves the body, the body gets cold. And only even until you study into the deeper levels of the cold, you realize that you actually get to a level where you build so much spirit, you can take a part of it out of your body and then keep another part of it there so the body stays alive. Because in the event that you pull all your spirit, like say if I draw all my breath from you, breath is spirit, then you cannot live. So if you pull all your spirit out of your body, the body actually does die. So these are the mechanics I think that anyone that is really searching for higher truths, et cetera, they're on to that. They're not down on ground level trying to figure out how to punish somebody because of, you know, it, and then the, the reasons become almost limit, limitless. And that's, again, most people's doctrines hinge on those reasons, who to blame, whose fault it is. And all that does is actually disempower you because the moment that you agree that someone else is the reason why or something else is the reason why you cannot expand, you actually have given your power to them to 
cause your expansions in some way or another. Like, you know, once they release me or once I get my retribution or once they whatever you can fill that with, that's when I'll be back on this stage of they took my power. So the reality is, is that you can go probably hundreds, if not thousands of lifetimes with this kind of ideology until one day, based on experience, several lifetimes in seeing the race game, race wars, all these kind of things, you wake up and say, you know what, I need to get out of this circle. I need to get out of the body. Now let's talk a little bit about the occult and occult symbolism. The body has always been synonymous with a circle. And the reason is, in, in, in the occult, it is a circle. That's why I say, oh, it's a perfect circle. Even when they draw the pentagram, it's 72 degrees times 5, which is 360 degrees. Again, a perfect circle. So the reason why the body is related to this circle is because it's related to specific geometry of how things are created in planets like Earth, which is known as phi. So if anyone comes to you even with supposedly having deep knowledge, then, and they talk about they know the ancestors, they know that the ancestors encoded phi, which is the pattern of nature. It, it's not even, it, 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 you know, the ancestors sometimes are seen as the authority, but nature is the authority, first of all. Oh, you saw the ancestors doing is emulating nature. So nature is building in a pattern that is synonymous with spirals, circles, curves, etc. That's called phi. So mm-hmm. when we start studying the properties of a circle, such as even the limitations of a circle, time, which is synonymous with a circle, orbits, meaning patterns, circuits, all of those different connotations actually equal repetitive behavior, repeating over and over. You know, you see a tree die, you see another tree spring up. There's a very repetitive part of what goes on in nature. And it's perfect. That's why they call it a perfect circle. So if you just so happen, though, to be trapped in perfection, listen to what I'm saying. Most people don't, will never come to a point of realizing what's going on until they see what's right in front of them. You're dealing with something perfect. You got people right now that if you tell them there's a supreme being, they won't even believe that. They're trying to delegate that to someone else. They may even kill you for insisting such things. So what that tells you is, is that if we're so far away from what we really are, we've even tricked ourselves into believing that we're not all there really is. <laughs> and that may sound mm. like a riddle or a puzzle or something, but when you really think about what's being said, it starts to show you, well, there's been a debasement going on. So I'm not saying that there's not something out there perpetrating this. See, I'm not saying that there isn't things that you don't need to know about what has gone on and happened. What I'm saying is at the end of the day, what does it really matter? <laughs> if you're going to sit there and never tap into your power and all this that you're talking about, and, be, and you just got a good conversation, and maybe you found someone to blame. See, in Christianity, and actually the works of the Old Testament and the Talmud, that's called the scapegoat. The scapegoat was Azazel. They said you put you know, all the expiations and the sins and the problems of the people onto these, and you hold the horns of this goat, and you consecrate that energy into the goat and then you release the goat into the woods and the zazel will devour it this is this is almost like man this is disney don't even pour it on that hard but the reality is is that <laughs> with those type of concepts what you have is people that are actually bred to look for the person to blame because that symbolically fulfills their polar game so they can get from black to white from night to day to to uh to, to dark to light and never find gray, never find neutral, never find balance, never find harmony. Because in that, when you do that, you bring yourself into the center. And this is why in the meditations, in many systems, they talk about coming into the center of your consciousness because that's the way out. Now, in the Kaudacia staff, what you see, the Kaudacia staff is actually a symbolic orientation of the body, male, female. You see the twine serpents, which are the two forms of Kundalini, the two forces and how they manifest as the kundalini force, which are both needed to create. It's just like male and female, light and dark, are polarities. But it's not Mm -hmm. just two snakes twined in there. There's this pole in the middle, which is actually synonymous with your spine. And that pole connects up to a globe, which is synonymous with your crown. And what they say is, in, in many of the deeper texts, is straight and narrow is the way. 
meaning that, it, but on one side, fire, and on the other side, deep water. Now, if fire and water did never symbolize the polarities, I don't know what does. So they're saying if you get caught up in this fire and water game, then you're going to zigzag, zig up the tree. The tree is your spine. And this is like the longest journey on the path because you'll get to one diametric opposition, like one life. That's what the chakras is, the fire is, whatever you want to call them, stand for. And then you'll come and incarnate into a completely opposite life just so you can never remember the previous life. So it's a big game to, let's say you're female this life, and then you come, come in male next life, and then it's very difficult for you to adapt to that. You were a female last life, so you just don't. And I assume that that actually mm. takes place also with colors and any kind of thing that can be divided in the spectrum in the world of dualities. So what we're talking about is, is that if someone says, what is the quickest way to point, from point A to point B? Someone tell you the straight line. So either we can keep getting into the dualistic fields of the, and, and they call the Ngala and Pingala, or we can go straight up into the source. And so that's our power. That's our ability is that when we're ready, which is something that we've already determined for ourselves, this will click. <laughs> it just clicks. It's like, mm-hmm. yo, you know, I'm, I'm ready to cash in. I can't take it anymore. This is ridiculous. Because you actually have to get to that point of when you're ready to wake up. And waking up is just another higher frequency that vibrates faster than what you're moving now. And in that waking up, you begin to perceive things that you could not perceive when you were moving on that slow frequency. Because this is very Mm. akin to anything that starts to vibrate rises. So now you get more of the bird's eye view of what you were dealing with previously. And that's why they tell you, you know, sometimes if you're on ground zero and you're dealing with something, it's very hard to actually determine what's going on. But the moment that you rise up and you then look down upon it, you can get the whole vista. You can see the causes, the effects. And so what I encourage people to utilize at times is compassion because I don't care what race you really are. Nobody likes to hear about some child getting molested or some kind of atrocity going on, right? I don't care who that person is. So in that tense, what if it is that atrocity that is causing that being to be off balance? What if they did experience something? whether it's, you know, the caked up lifestyle where you never even grow, you kind of never mature. That's, you know, some people that are supposed to be rich, that's not easy. You did, you'll never mature. Nobody's done you a favor. So then you come out with all these dis, you deform, deformities, and then somebody puts you in a position of power, and now you're abusing people just like you were really abused. So this is, if we're looking for somebody to blame, we could be here all night if we're looking for the solution. Now, you know, that's when I get the phone call. That's when I get into it because that's what I'm looking for because what, how I learned was the solution, which begins with soul. Soul means the sun in every tense. Is, has always been there before the problem. Just as the light will always be there before the shadow. So thus we know just by that simple analogy that any problem we come into actually has one solution. (laughs) All the problems that we could ever put into one barrel have one solution. And when we learn that that solution is us, not blaming someone else, not someone else's fault, whatever, because it's going to be us that fixes that within, then that's when we're now on the path. Now you're on that straight and narrow path. And I won't tell anybody at all, because if you notice, the spine is an upward ascent. They call that Mount Maru. This is a climb up. So this doesn't mean slip and slide. Like you're about to slide down, we're about to have fun, and then all of a sudden you're going to get enlightened, and next thing, damsels with beautiful eyes as big as almonds and, you know, streams of nectar, (laughs) you know, basking in the glow of the God. That's not what I said. What I said was that we need to climb uphill, and what that's going to do is by the time we make it to the top, we're going to be strong enough to not only have a firm foundation, that's like when you work out on your legs, because all this stuff connects. If you work out on your legs a lot, you'll start noticing your stance is even different. It's like you're stable. It's like someone who does Muay Thai and that kind of thing. They're very stable. So the more you keep Mm. going up there, you don't lose disconnection to where you came from. 
going back down there, right. distributing those seeds that you got from on high, <laughs> you know, all of what is necessary for one who ascends and descends the tree. Because what I started noticing is that everyone wanted to go to heaven, but no one wanted to die. You have all these traditions that talk about how to get out of here, but never <laughs> how to get back to actually assist those that you were here with. <laughs> so, you know, it's like kind of selfish to just work on a fishing for yourself and you're like, yo, I'm gone, everybody. Goodbye, mom. I know you're, you're completely toxified and this makes it. And you too, ex-wife, I hated you. I'm fake. They think they're going to somehow get out here in that mindset. Your mission is not strong enough. This is like, you know, if you're trying to accomplish something big in life, you're going to need a lot of motivation. So that's why it is okay to take on responsibilities like lifting worlds. Because according to the last profile that I got from those who were talking about black power and even white power, that they had all this power. So with all this power, what are you doing? And that's, you know, so that brings us <laughs> present to the whole thing. Because then, you know, we get out of that whole kid, my dad can beat your dad. And, you know, and all that, you know. Because you know, <laughs> that kind of, that's what you're dealing with the graduated version of that. And the master teachers will talk to you about how there is a stagnancy, especially within the Western culture, of those who have participated in it, of being about 13 years old in a sense to when they stop developing. Like, that's like the bar mitzvah. <laughs> and at that point, mm. there is a chemical change within the body that if it does not continue, then that person, you know, you meet 50-year-old, 13-year-olds all the time. I see them on yes. the TV. I hear them. You know, so that's the reality is the reality is designed for people to remain as children in this. We call this mm. smothering because there is a surrogate mother, meaning a surrogate mother is if this is not really your mom. Like the king and queen, like say queen, king, queen of Britain is not your mother. They have no direct descendancy to your tribe. So thus they're surrogates. They're raising you, but they're not raising you inside the womb of your mother, which cares for you. So when you're raised mm. as a surrogate, you may, re you may not receive any more sustenance at a certain point, you know, because we need sustenance as we're growing up because as we're growing, our chakras are also developing. We move back into those spheres. One to seven is the root chakra. So whatever happens to that child during the age of one to seven, once that seven age period comes around, that chakra becomes sealed. So that means in order for them to even undo anything that's been done to them that's out of balance during that time, they must descend and then crack open hell because the root chakra is symbolic to the hearth or the fire that must power all the rest of the chakra centers. You know, so I, I understand this. You know, everyone wanted to open a third eye, but the worst thing to do is open a third eye and you don't have a root chakra because you don't have any grounding. We call that Babylonian mm. syndrome. Jerusalem syndrome. They have real syndromes for this. The person basically becomes detached from their roots. The roots was barely hanging on in the first place. And then they can never land. So they start seeing things that nobody else can see, turning off people that are harmonized into another frequency that they no longer can even mesh with. So these are, you know, I, I see this though as the adventure. So, so when we get off of watching world star hip hop every moment or tuning into Facebook, or worshiping technology, because technology replaced spirituality. That's the la latest move where it's been gradually working on that. I have an entire um, presentation I just put forth recently called The State of the People 2016, which you can find on uh, YouTube. But it goes into depth, and I'm going to be digging into that topic a bit more about the total transformation of our consciousness, not just consciousness, we're talking about even down to the fibers, we're talking into the nano, we're talking into the DNA, and what that really means for us, you see, and then when you are able to ascertain that kind of information, what you begin to learn is not so much as, oh shit, we're in trouble, I can't do anything about this, this is too deep, but man, I must be really powerful. If, it, if you start learning about the components and the keys to how you're really put together, you start realizing this is not an accident or mistake. And also, this is not just left at a whim. This is being watched and maintained. We should never believe at one moment that there's not principalities very interested at what goes on and what is conducting on Earth. Like, look how many people are here, mm. how many resources, chemicals, ideas, memories, MEs, relics, artifacts, 
you know, you, do I have to keep going on? So how is that not going to be valuable to something? So now right. if it's valuable to us, though, because that's the only thing that really matters, is this valuable to you? Because this is where it's all hinging on now. Like these so-called controllers, they're, you know, they're clinging on to it for life. They act like there's no other life but this. They will protect this up until they die because they know the value of it. So with even our mm-hmm. souls and our abilities, are we protecting our souls, our abilities, because we know the value of it. And of course, the answer is no, because it's been devalued. People are not in tune with realizing that they have a force that can be generated with their body, that can be vividly felt. But this is only because of miseducation, not because we have a whole evolutionary honor to jump into before we can actually do things like that. Because you could go look on YouTube, you could type Dynamo Jack Chingong Master and see someone doing it. So this is not, you know, are we going to jump into this warp drive and get into this time machine and then finally, you know, rearrange our DNA to the point where we can get to a point? What, I mean, no. This is about activating what is already inside because there is nothing else. But when we start to tune into that, because that's all, you know, the, what the Internet has done is this, it, it's a cure and a poison. It's put all the information in front of a person so they can assess it in a time in which they only want to assess a certain kind of information. But there are still mm. many of us that say, well, shoot, let me keep purging this Internet. Because remember, it's 90% of the Internet is on the deep web. That means it actually can't be accessed by Google. Google cannot index everything that's available on the web. There are other search engines like Devon, Devon Think. Okay, this is a Devon Agent is what it's called, D-E-V-O-N Agent. I, thought, I was like, man, using the software, I was like, man, this should be illegal or something. But what it does is it searches the Internet from an anonymous perspective, as if they don't know what country you're in, they don't know anything you Google before or search before, because all that actually controls what you even see through Google. So what these kind of search agents do is they can run a search, and it could take till tomorrow or two days from now to bring you back everything that's on that particular keyword. So when you start doing that kind of research, then what is – brought forth out of the mines of the internet. Let's say, for instance, you're mining now. You're a deep miner. You didn't search one thing. You're going to wait three days to get it back. Some people, they want their stuff right back right away, so they go to Google. You go to deep search, then you pull up, you put in, you know, some kind of ancestor's name, see if there's anything out there. And then when you start pulling that information back, then, you know, you know more about this. And that's really what, where I'm at with this. This has been going on for like five or six years where I need to know all the mechanics. I have a highly activated spiritual and logical side. See, because the logical side has got to come and make sense of this. As above, so below. I need to know, you know, where is this as below part, which is the logic. Like, how does this connect into what I'm dealing with right now? So when we get into topics like mm. money, currency, language, all these things, it doesn't become just something I'm learning. It actually becomes something we can master. And when we master that, because if we've extracted the truth, that's why I say, you know, many times we're like miners. If we extract the truth out of something. Now, remember, the whole act of being a miner, that not only means you're young, like a seed, but it also means you're digging into something to extract something that's valuable. So what is the whole thing with the miner? They're going to go into this cave, and there's all this dirt, and there's only a little bit of gold. And so now you must find these little pieces of gold and put them all together. That's how truth is now on this kind of frequency that we're on. You must dig deep into all the forms of knowledge that we have to extract that nugget. You see, it's not going to be the whole wow. thing. You can't eat the whole cake. It's like it's leaven. You know, you're going to eat all this cake and it, it's not going to be but a little bit of truth in there. So we have to realize that that's, that's a time we're living in now. And we can help each other a lot by when someone extracts that information. First of all, we have to have a blueprint. What even the communities of the past were used to is setting up some kind of you know, where, where are we going with this? Where's the mission statement? Is it written somewhere? The newer factions, they just got, everyone got ideas. And because that's the society also, we can go back to that again, that everyone believes that they have this, they're going to have this brilliant idea that's going to set them apart from everyone else, like an entrepreneur, some, you know, some drug dealer, you know, that never went, never goes to jail. You know, people painted, you know, in their mind, different ways because the society produces each of those kind of roles. That's what they, what they shine a spotlight on. They shine a spotlight on the guy who, you know, never went to college and then just played poker, and now he's a multimillionaire. <laughs> so that's like the worst role oh, model. Yeah. And then in addition to that, you know, right. you got Fetty Wap, and you got, 
any, anybody that thrust in in front of the spotlight, but then behind that, you got billions. It's like lottery numbers to as far as how many people are actually going to be able to fulfill that same role. But that doesn't stop a person from believing that it's going to single them out and that now they're going to get to that stage and they're going to live happily ever after. But see, what we're wanting to do is not kill that dream or the frequency of that dream that you can be one in a billion. We want to focus that, though, on where that's really important. Be one in the billion of a human that activates their full potential consciousness. You see what I mean? Because so the, cause the right. same work is going to be needed. You know, because sometimes, you know, again, I always have to keep putting these disclaimers in there like, don't believe you're not going to need that passion, <laughs> that desire to not go to sleep. Because, you know, it could be in every tent, like a Freddy Krueger movie. You know, you go to sleep in this Joker, you may die a couple times, <laughs> you know, wake up, slide into another world. Who knows? Like, the thing is, you have to know. And see, that's the difference between an adult and a child. See, the adult is responsible for knowing. The adult is not in there talking about, you know, what are we going to, yeah, I don't know what little baby's going to eat tonight. And then, you know, they just phased out. Not any real parent. They know what we got to eat tonight. They know how rent's going to get paid. You see what I mean? Or how they're going to have to do what they need to do to get it paid. That's when you take the responsibility. So uh, people need to ask themselves just this one question right now. Are they taking the responsibility for the destination of their spirit? When they die, especially since death, no one has actually escaped here. So, you know, that, then that, that's when those are adult questions. Then the kids leave the room. He's like, ah, I just don't want to talk about that right now. You know what I mean? So we're not going to talk about in- inevitability so we can at least get that out of the way so we can really live. How is it that I can right. even live a life, talk about I love people and then I, I enjoyed this and I experienced this. If I have records that I can't even, I won't remember it when I'm. Done? I mean, shoot, let me go now. Then. I mean, wh- what am I playing for? I mean, give me some incentive. So this is what I would what? drill into myself on those late nights of, of having nothing but time to think. And what it started bringing me to is that, man, it's, actually, this is really about you. Like, man, pick up that encyclopedia over there, man. And I pick up the encyclopedia. I start reading about people I, we, nobody even knows about anymore and how they did great things, too. And I don't even know who they are. So if people think that it just takes to do great things so people can remember you, then there's a bunch of people in the encyclopedia that they don't get remembered. So this is about something else is what I'm saying. And we're encouraged to keep any kind of stigma, any kind of thing that we run into that doesn't allow us to get to the next stage and mode of our thought that becomes a wall or barrier or block for us. We must knock it down and then we must keep going. And the good thing about this or the balanced thing, harmonic thing, is it won't be just you. You got your brothers and sisters along in this mission. Many of us are awake now. You know, you could caught us probably 10 years ago, you know, maybe we popping, popping bottles and, you know, they say popping tags or throwing money or whatever. Who cares? <laughs> it's about what's going yeah. on right now with what you're doing when it's time to wake up because even a dummy can see it. <laughs> It can't keep going like this. This is like a party that we just riding the wheels off of. It's like, hey, you know, I don't think we can keep you in this form of uh, communication, this form of energy. And I don't think this is even 10 years sustainable. Forget 2015. Uh, they, they say those dates like 20, in 2019. And, you know, now this sounds like something from the future. When I say 2015, I'd be like, shit. I can remember 2015 running across the credits of one of their movies from with Schwarzenegger in 2015. You know, they got the bad animations and all that. But, you know, <laughs> right. like cars is flying. You know, here we are. It's 2015. Ain't no car left the ground. Here's the stuff, really, except for somebody else going to buy it that we don't know. And then on top of that, listen, because getting into practical stuff rather than just, you know, occultism, because it all connects. How are we still using forms of energy, i.e. electricity and oil, when we got things like graphene, <laughs> which you can research that they use even now, we have elements that generate energy, piezoelectricity, that are harmonic not only with the environment but also with the body, meaning that these elements actually pump energy into the body. Even being, you know, you operate in something that's operating on piezoelectricity. Piezoelectricity is when quartz crystals are uh, forced together. They're under pressure. So they emit this voltage from quartz. That's why you got lighters that you click and they got that little flick, that got, they got the little uh, a spark. That's piezoelectricity. So that same electricity is actually assimilable for the body and very powerful, and it just keeps generating. So here we are, Fred Flintstone and them, still using oil. <laughs> 
and electricity as mm. if we're still waiting on these technologies of the future. So you're like, I've been in here for 20 years in this matrix with you. And so I'm watching the same commercial 20 years ago talking about, you know, all these possibilities of the future. But 20 years later, there's the same commercial running about, you know, the future. So, you know, the gig is kind of up at this point. It's like, well, there is no actual future unless we create it. So that's what, you know, I feel like, you know, that's where we need to get into position at personally and start working on that. And then what I find is because we have access to this knowledge, like, for instance, 100 years ago almost exactly, the same thing that's happening right now with people raising their consciousness, right, happened. They call it the Age of Enlightenment. You can Google it. It'll pull back an entry in Wikipedia called the Age of Enlightenment. And during this time, because remember, now everyone's allowed to read, and you get to try to read, you get your arm cut off, get your eye gouged out. So only the aristocracy and the, the priest craft were reading. But in that particular time, Medellin, uh, Sir Isaac Newton, Richard Bacon, the real 007, two-ball cane, which is the symbolism behind that, John D., even uh, those who have been from Pyth- the Pythagorean initiates, all these people came into this royal, what they call the royal society to actually find out beyond shadow of a doubt how worlds are created. And how they worked this was the same way that the Library of Alexandria was built. When Pharaoh put the edict out in the land that anyone who bought anything strange to him or rare would be paid for it, all sorts of stuff started popping up. <laughs> so it's the same thing the Enlightenment era did. They sent edicts, decrees, and bulls across the land, especially the fishermen, that if you find anything that's rare or unique and you bring it to us and it finds, you know, we find it rare and unique, we'll pay, for, we'll pay you for it handsomely. So then they start collecting all this stuff. And because there was no TV, they took pictures of this stuff. And this stuff leads 100% to the blueprint of how the world is built, coming from the ocean, Mar, Maritime, Mary, the Black Mother, Black Goo, whatever you want to call it, Mayat. And how Mayat builds, just like a sand dollar, in these curved pentagrams that equal perfect structures known as fractals and spirals. And then these back fractals and spirals in that 3.14 of continuous uniqueness create all these different life forms. <laughs> and how even the vessels that contain hearts, meaning where your heart comes from, livers, kidneys, were actually in shells and muscles, meaning actual shells that in, in case life forms that have the function of what your heart does right now. Then at some point, oh. Kemetans enter the scene and say, we have the spirit, now build the body. That is exactly what the text, ancient text says. We have the spirit, meaning we know how to open up the vault of the netherworld where the spirits come from below, from the blackness. Now, but we need the bodies. We need shells. That's synonymous. Even in the Kabbalah, shells are known as the vehicles that we're in, shells. So they built the bodies. So their virtual reality, their PlayStation was making the Beatles, making the the cheetahs, making even what became Cadman, the actual supreme androgynin. And... That, that, so that was what we were up to. You see what I mean? And so when, we, when the schism took place, see, the schism is, and I was, it took years to identify what was the schism. The schism is accepting one, something or else as God or some kind of thing above you. Because what that does is it blocks you. That's why even in the, mu- in the movie, the, uh, the Animatrix, they say, well, the machines became dependent upon the shun. See, they're talking about the slaves. That's why there was a million machine march. <laughs> So when they say we cut them off from the sun, that means that we cut them off from their, their source. Now, what was their source? They say in Solomon's text, they were sun worshipers, as if it was a bad thing. <laughs> like even these people today still haven't matched the power of the sun. So they want to run around and talk about, they even want to name their savior the sun. I mean, what are we talking about here? So in the sun, which is the most <laughs> evident form of power, I don't care what book you're reading, at the end of the day, you're going to need the light to come back. So what that was about is the interfacing that our ancestors had with prime, meaning through the sun, the sun is encoded with deep levels of knowledge that reaches all the way back to core. So when one connects themselves with the sun, they actually connect with all other central suns. And to be able to generate power like that, you see what I mean? When you to generate 
you know, regardless of if someone piss you off, regardless if they black, <laughs> regardless if they white, sun come out every day. There's no sunset for the sun. Sun don't ch- kick back, take breaks. Sun's not a male. It can't have just one pole. It's a generator, so it has a positive, negative, neutral. So this is, this is restoring, as they say, uh, uh, balance, balance to the system. Why? The only reason why we get night and day is because the planet is on a 26.5 degree, I believe, wobble, which gives us night and day. The only time something starts to wobble is when it slows down. Like if we spin a top, it's going to stay perfect when it has that force to spin. You know what I'm talking about? Like on Inception, they spin the top. The thing is going to keep spinning perfectly until it starts to slow down. Then it starts to wobble. Now, anyone who's been in a nice car before knows if you got a wobbling tire, it ain't right no more. <laughs> and on top of that, you can't achieve top speed. So when planets start slowing down, so does the consciousness of the inhabitants of the beings that live upon them. So whether it's someone else, alien, that convinced you of doing that, or whatever the story is, it's still not going to hide the fact of the repercussions. And, of course, if it's done gradually, no one's going to be even knowing what's going on. It's going to be like arsenic. It's going to slowly put people to sleep. And those who are awake watch, are watching this go on. I mean, you just watch people almost like it's lights on, but nobody's home. But we're not uh-huh. here necessarily to condemn them and to blame them and to that old wretch. <laughs> you see <laughs> what fellowship does darkness have with light? All of that. We're here saying, yo, you know, this is. If we all don't straighten up here, we would never get to the level of power. As long as they straighten up literally, you know, we would never get to the level of power or full sustainability. Thus, the planet cannot go above the speed of light. Look at what we're talking about here. That's why they say there's nothing new under the sun because only until you get above the speed of light do you travel faster than the sun. And when you get on the vibratory frequency that's higher than the sun – then you're in the field of harmonics. When you're slowed down, it's almost like you're in, in the past. This is 8,000 years behind the sun, basically, in a tense. If you put your consciousness on that level. So everyone needs to realize everything goes from the center inward as far as real power is concerned. Corruption is from the center outward. So there is nothing in space except for the manifestations that came from our hearts. The only thing is that you need to do is get to inner space. So I know of those who understood. I even know some that overstood. But we were talking about understanding when we started. And we're still on that right now because if you understand then you can't fall for all of this stuff that these folks cook up every day. Because I know human beings and all of our cultures, we're good storytellers. So if I'm willing to listen to a story, that means I'm a child and I need to be put to sleep. But if I'm ready to get into the adept <laughs> position, then I need to hang that up and start getting into this and saying, you know, I'm, I'm in. So that, you know, that's what I'm talking about. I don't want to get long-winded about that specific topic. But so now you see the full gambit of race, what it causes, and what his conclusion will be. Because black and white pieces, at the end of the day, the king and the pawn go back in the same box. So if a person can't get out of the 8x8, 8 8, 64, 8 times 8 is 64 bit, I Ching, the law of changes. These books are older, <laughs> these books are older than most things that are on the planet. These books are encoded with symbolism that even our ancestors were using inside the temple that people are yet to decode of what it means. But we're talking about the law of changes. That's I Ching. And the Egyptian Book of the Dead, the Tibetan Book of the Dead, center, center around one thing, change. So when you can master change, like, because a lot of people have problems with change. Like, if some change, that means now they got to readjust, especially if it becomes opposite to what they expected to go on. And this, this is keys to the, how this whole thing works. You have to change before the changer changes you. Meaning that there's something that comes around that only thing it's looking for is change. You need to be different. You need to get up. You need to get up out of there. You've been sitting on the block. Okay, well, forget it. We'll kill grandma. This, this dude think we playing with him. We told him about experience. This is not, this is, this is real. When your parents are really educating you, that's why I like this one brother, I think his name is Achille Illy or something like that. You just type in 30 grams of psilocybin mushrooms and you'll get a brother that went all the way. 
And what he will begin to explain to you is what all of what, what rites of passage in a tense really were about. It wasn't about you spending all day trying to figure out how you're going to romanticize somebody thing in Jodeci. It was about definitely realizing how to make yourself quieter than a puma, how to eliminate the weight in your body, how to be able to penetrate through fire without it burning, because that's going to develop a whole different kind of being, a being that's ready to leave mother's nest, uh, of the smothering mother's nest, and to get out there and be responsible for what they manifest because when you get only thing that truth really is, is getting into a frequency to where when you think something, it manifests right then. <laughs> There's no truer than that. But if you can't get mm. out of your mind the spell, if you can't come out of duality, you can get out there and you're going to kill yourself, basically, because that's what duality is. You're going to fire back on yourself. So this is why people want to know, well, why can't we reach? <laughs> it's not going to be anyone else's fault. It's your fault. But that's what you want. See, this is where we start taking our fault and making them into our power. Even when something's not working and something's not activated, generally the electronic device will have this thing on it and say fault. <laughs> I'm like, okay, there's something wrong. You need to take it back in, fault. So this is about realizing that there's a fault in your system. It's understood you've got a billion reasons on why it could have happened. Now we're about the solutions of how to restore that, meaning restore. Like when you restore a computer, you put all of its original data back on, its original operating system, OS, OS synonymous with Oz, real programs, the ones that actually maintain realities and balance, MEs, not what some usurper then stole from your ancestor along with some signet rings to sign that they was the one that stamp, gave them the stamp of approval See, people don't realize, you know, you got to read history. There's no TVs and there's no cell phones. So the only thing to authenticate whether one is really um, authorized or not is the signet ring. It's the signature ring. So any FERT or Pharaoh or, you know, there's deeper terms for basically the fathers and the mothers, they have a symbol that they use to basically sign off. So if I send you off to the Watusis, I can sign that with a Zulu signet ring, and the, Wazu, wa, the, the Watusis will know that it's okay to accept you. So you got things yeah. going on that people never even realized happened, like when Pythagoras had the signet of one of the, the, the deeper tribes that was connected with Kemet and walked right into the school of the Egyptians and learned the wisdom of the Egyptians. <laughs> like they say Moses did. So this is the things that you will find this as your adventure because it's about you. And so this becomes much more integral to your growth and also even much more really entertaining. I'm not subscribing also to our pursuit to happiness not being entertaining. Like this doesn't have to be, you know, this drudgery because to tell you the truth, if something's too heavy, Call somebody else and have them help you lift it. Like meaning that if we sit in an apartment building, this is just common sense, and I need to lift this couch, and I'm in there by myself, and I got three brothers next door, why wouldn't I knock on the door and say, hey, y'all, can y'all move this couch with me? <laughs> you see what I mean? So this is also still about that. This doesn't mean that you serve me. This doesn't mean I'm your guru. All of the, see, that's, all that is the sickness. When we start going into that, that's the duality. We, we call it the whisper. Even in Arabic, they would have been Allah, he shaitan regime. Allah, protect me from the whispers of shaitan. What are they talking about? They're talking about protect me from that voice that keeps talking to me, telling me basically everything is out here to kill me, to hurt me, that I'm no good, that, you know, I need to be ashamed of doing that, that, you know, because that thing will, it's, it's the whisperer. It'll drill you to death. And it's a part of the collective consciousness. So this means until you learn how to firewall yourself from it, it will always be there. It's like tuning into a certain station. It will always have something to broadcast to you about what you cannot do. So it's just about, you know, whether you believe that. That's why on the top of the wall it said, know, the seat, know thyself. Because if that doesn't apply to you, I'm quick to say, yeah, that doesn't apply to me. That whole God, you know, mastering over and all that kind of stuff, that's something that y'all accepted. And, I, you know, y'all can be okay with that. I can't be, even be mad at you at that. But I don't care if a billion, you can bring me a Googleplex. You can bring me a Petaflop. You can bring me a Yoda bite. See, those are words that people haven't even tapped into yet, but are the next 
the high levels, the segments of storing memory. You can bring me all that of many people going into one direction, and it definitely doesn't mean I'm going to go that way. In fact, it probably means because of what I've learned over time that I'm going to be going in the opposite direction because I'm going to know that that's exactly. the right way. You see what I mean? So there we go. So we, we can go ahead, and that was about an hour, but, you know, I, I feel like that, so, you know. So I, it, seems like, it seems like in a way you're almost challenging God, and I don't know if we want to clarify this, but some people would say, you know, maybe we don't believe in God, but there's a higher being, um, and they believe this in fact. Well, what are your thoughts on that? Well, you know, first of all, we need to understand if the language becomes the, the, let's say, the interpreter of what it is that we speak of, then we need to examine the words. Now, God is the Germanic god, Gud, who's Gothic, a Gothic king, him and Bran the Bless, who created Britain. And these, which is why you get Google, that is the land of Gog Magog, it basically this is the entire power structure of, you know, real supremacy. So first we need to examine who embedded this entity known as God in people's consciousness from the Western civilization, because actually they're the only ones that use that word to describe who their supreme being is. So since all these words actually mean something, you don't go into Islam and they're talking about God. No, they talk about Ilah. Because there's a certain tone and a vibration that is evoked when that name is said. And it's the same with God. So if a person mm-hmm. wants to just drill into that specific topic, then we, you know, we need to clarify who God is and how God just ran on a tirade for the last 2,000, 3,000 years of instilling in everyone and beating the hell out of them in their biorhythm that that being is the only one. So it, it's understandable if someone is still believing that there's only one God, but then tells you that you're a children of the God. So when the children of the God will grow up, wouldn't they be God? But, but there's only one of God. I mean, if you accept this, all of a sudden, you know, exactly. all of it becomes cursed. It's any man who hangeth upon a tree. It says that at the end of Deuteronomy, yet Jesus Christ hanging on a tree. Good and evil, I do both things. This is what God says, but God says, do not be a part of evil. How we even, like, where are we at after that? So that's just the status of God's realm, who's the immortal Charlemagne. So if but we when remove, we go into, but, but, but let remove, me finish, because when we, well, first, let me, let me, let me just finish, because I, I want to finish answering your question. But when we go into the other scope of if a person saying, are you saying that you're um, desecrating, let's say, the supreme being, I have to flip that question on them, because since they're the supreme being, I have to ask them, are they desecrating themselves? Because the truth is and always will be that we are the supreme being, even if we do not realize that. But that doesn't stop that from being that way. That's the interesting thing. Just because even if you don't want to be, uh, let's say you don't want to be a human no more, it won't stop you in this life until you kill yourself from being human. There are certain things that you have to begin to accept. And one of those things is the responsibility of being a supreme being who has began to create Because if you notice here, let's talk about the beginning of the text. The whole issue that is actually going on in books like Genesis in the beginning is this problem with beings creating that don't know what they're doing. So thus, in this first creation, which is supposed to be the unholy act, basically creating something and not knowing how to manage it, one comes forth known as Cain. All this is a metaphor. It's not actually an actual story. It could play out as a story. Who cares? What does it really matter? But the metaphor is if you don't know how to bring life into three-dimensional worlds and sustain them, then you're going to get a Cain situation. (laughs) And Cain is the Khan, is the king, is the Cohen, is the priest, because all those words are synonymous. That's the first one that ever stepped forth and said, I am the one, when ones don't exist on nature. Straight lines don't exist in the curve. And then come into the dimension and tell everyone that you will now come to me because I am the Eve angel. Basically, I'm the go-between between between you and the source. And this is how all religious traditions are set up because that's what real technology is. Technology is simply to distract one from the source. We can see that happening with iPhones, but we don't realize that that happened 6,000 years ago with Judaism. It happens, you know, even before that when the king who was an androgynin. See, because that's why the word even king and Cain or kohanim is also kahin, which gives us our word queen. So we're actually talking about an androgynous being, and that's why you see Baphomet there with the androgynous characteristics, because it is a harken back to Yadabeo, 
also known as Yahweh or the Tetragrammaton, coming out of balance and not realizing that he's not the only one because there is his mother. And that is a plight of a race of beings that are so much more advanced than where we've degraded our consciousness into. We're still stuck in their progression like pawns on a chessboard playing out a war over and over again that always has the same result. Just like you see mm-hmm. Horus or, or, or in, in the hands of his mother Isis to show that the, 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 the ruler will die back into the womb of his mother in order to bring himself out again. So go ahead and, and, and go with the questions because this is a very uh, in-depth topic. And th- what happens, though, is if we try to sum it up, that's why it's good to understand the origins of words, which are worlds. When you add an L, which it means God, like an L in, is, as the Elohim is the, what's missing to a world as far as right. when, you, when you talk about words. So when you add that power and that ability to create into something, that's when it begins to manifest because that was the only use of what we're doing right now. Like we don't, didn't use words except for bringing things into physical realities. Other than that, we incept. We use our frontal lobe, basically a silent level of communication that's based on intentions, to bring things into realms where they will have the ability to flourish. So, because if you birth something, and let me just tell you why y'all the Baal was in the condition he was in. I'm not here to tell you that one of these is your enemy. What I'm saying is when you bring a phenomenal cosmic power into a bubble, you get an explosion almost. It's compressed. You see, so this is the same thing that most people are experiencing right now in reality. They're compressed. They can't go out and sing like they want to sing. They don't even think about doing that no more. Man, woman, rolls their voice to the highest heavens once in time. Our ancestors are singing and dancing people, but now you sing something, everyone looks at you all crazy. You know, they got the videos of people singing on the train and everyone's like, shut up, you know, because no longer do you mm-hmm. hear man and woman's voice on the heights. This is because they've lost even the connection with the words of power, adapted a language that's not ours. English is 26 letters. You only have half of it. There's 52 characters in any deck of cards in this particular tarot system. And that's masonry. Then you get into all sorts of things. You see what I mean? So this is when you begin to open up the box that they call occultism, which is what is the craft or the spell that can be cast on someone to make them forget. Because in these movies, you know, they always show you that the witch has this spell, and what does she make them bite? The apple. So what is the apple? When you slice the apple in half, go do it right now. You open it up, you'll get a pentagram right there. Go Google it, Apple Pentagram. You'll see the apple has the pentagram in the center. So when they say the big apple, what they're saying is the big pentagram, and it's inverted. So this is the knowledge of how to create worlds, how to destroy worlds, how to turn worlds upside down. And this is, again, when you – because even when you ever get a glimpse of Kemet and you get a glimpse of these ancient ancestors, you always get a glimpse of them doing something beside arguing and fighting with each other in cars and, 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 and money and all that kind of thing. You get a whole different scope of level of power and being. So we have to realize that that's not just a fanciful imagination. That's actually what was really going on. And when we get to a point of realizing where the disconnect happened, someone raising forth and saying that they're going to be your God, because that's going to disconnect you from you. You see what I mean? And that, that's a simple play. That doesn't take, you know, you see it's a simple play. Like someone jump in front of you and then tell you all of a sudden that they have something that you don't have. That's why they were, they were saying it was like, don't ever listen. Right? They talk about you're never supposed to listen to Satan. This is, I'm not saying Satan's the bad guy, but look at the metaphor. Don't listen to him. Because the conversation is, what is the conversation? Well, did he know that the reason why they don't want you to eat this apple, meaning the reason why they don't want you to go into this pentagram and create, is because then you'll know the knowledge of good and evil. And then you'll be like them. <laughs> now, if you listen to something like that, that's as silly as someone also telling you much of the stuff that's going on today about where you're, who has, who's powerful and all this kind of stuff. It's the same place. And then if you then accept that now this person starts to talk and they're telling you now the real being with the power is and whatever fills in that X, now you've dethroned yourself. Now you've lost basically your kundalini. Now you've become a fallen angel because now it's time for you to have to sustain your ideas of whatever you can be based on what someone else or something else achieves. So, you know, this, mm. is, this is a real thing. Like, yeah. we've got to understand the value of the soul. 
because the soul is so valuable, man. Some of them, they'll trick you out of a hamburger these days. They, you can go buy this hamburger. This hamburger is filthy. They will paint that thing and gloss it and oversaturate it and pull all the pus marks and everything out of it just to get you to eat it. So how much more will they do to con you out of your soul for you see what I mean? And so that's really the only, that's, if there's a game, the only game being played here is about the spirit and, you know, the degrees of the spirit. And, uh, and so in, in conclusion, just to explain, knowledge and power, heat, is measured in degrees. So when they even say, I got a third master degree, doctor degree, now these are like three degrees of something that has 360 degrees. Even when a person hits 33rd degree, they're missing 66.1. So what happens is, is that, or actually even more than that, excuse me, they're missing a bunch of degrees. So what we have to realize is that our status in existence is based on how hot, how much energy can you take? Because on the other side of this, there's an unlimited amount. Now, if you want someone brokering for you, Selling you ideas of scarcity. Oh, you know, there's not that much. You're lucky I'm giving this to you now. You know, you need to fall down and worship because, you know, this is like very rare that I even talk to you. You'd be surprised at the games are even better played in people's mind. When you got on the other side of this, this unexhausted, so much energy that you can't even really handle. You got to like, okay, let me, that's why knowledge was taught in degrees. They didn't just get that from, you know, something they created. They're devoid of originating anything. They got that from, Oh, the degrees of the circle. And each of the degrees is the status of the sun as it's moving through the vault of heaven, a.k.a. pantheism, the, st- the different states the sun goes in, even in the underworld. So when we talk about degrees, that means if a person can only handle 33 degrees of daylight, then they got a long journey to go. And those are like the depths from where they come from. So it's about 360 degrees of knowledge so you can come into total realization of the circle, old or Boris, who eats its tail. This means that the world is indeed perfect. It will always be the same way that it is. It births, sustains, dies. Where do you learn that from? Nature. And it lives again. Now, if you want to be in that system for the rest of your existence, that's your choice. But... The depth knowledge shows that the first thing that we really figured out when we sat down to really get into our souls is how to get out of time. You see what I mean? Because right now, you know, we're in time. You can watch yourself gradually every day do a time lapse. You're going to get older. You know, so stepping out of this whole realm of time and gravity and all of what this exists with is really almost like first priority for anyone coming into this. And in through what you find out and you discover, you unlock your power and ability. So now there's no harm, no foul. You basically become a student of the university. We're called the universe. And, you know, so hopefully, you know, people begin to start seeing it that way, that they need to stop flunking out and skipping class and start taking some of these lessons. Stop also confusing lessons for the mission because, you know, while you're still getting yourself together, this, you know, still looking for good men and women to get into actually assisting the youth in re basically gardening. <laughs> That's why the whole role is all symbolic was gardeners because someone has to tend the garden. And this is our children. This is our souls. Right. And so, or it will reap thorns and thistles. What does it mean by that? Shit. One of these youngsters right now, they may, you know, they may let your soul light free. If you walk down the wrong alley, it's going to reap thorns and thistles for you because they haven't been taken care of because a bunch of beings that don't even know how to create keep putting the most valuable thing, not iPhone 5, not uh, or 9 or 10, not computers or whatever they didn't put as was the next biggest thing as important, but something that the unlocking the mysteries of even how the human body even works in conjunction with the soul and the spirit, you know, you're talking about that. So wh- how far is that? You know what I mean? It's like even when you just cut open a finger and you look off in there a little bit, you're going to see right away that that's not some dummy's work. So it's just about, you know, rising to the knowledge of what you see is self-evident within yourself. Mm. I like what you said right there. Stop confusing the lessons for the missing. That is on point. And I also like what you said about mining um, because I've, I've been doing that since I've gotten on the path. Like I was a Christian 
then I was a Muslim, then I was a Buddhist, then I got caught up with the Moors. And it's like people that have followed, uh, you know, my path, they say, oh, you just like change, you just like switching it up. But once I get what I need from, you know, the lesson, then I feel like it's necessary for me to keep it moving. Like, this is not my mission. My yeah. mission is not to be a Christian or a Buddhist or no shit like that. So, um, well, I, I mean, again, it, ma- it makes up, up the found- it makes up the foundation. I mean, I've always looked at it that way now is that, you know, we go through this stuff and it's good to just keep it moving and it becomes a form of foundation. But if we get stuck, you know, then it actually becomes somewhat of a harbinger because, you know, we just we don't we're ever, you know, expanding uh, beings. And so when we stop doing that, mm-hmm. well, actually, the interesting thing is we never actually stop doing that. Even when we're going through hard times, the, the spirit is still learning lessons. So, you know, in real retrospect, you know, right. they say in the, in the greatest tradition, I would tell you, like, some of this stuff you can read and it, it really makes a deep impact. But what it basically, basically says is that for many people, if they don't get on the, let's say, the right side of this, which is that balance, actually, then what the world is seeking to make them is give up, basically. And if you want to and basically surrender themselves completely to that physical incarnations are not a good idea. Some people are actually many people are on that path. And if you don't think so, look at what's going on in Syria. Do you think for any of these people that life is ever going to be pleasant again for them? And so, of course, we can go into blaming things, but we need to actually look at what is the real reason behind things. It's because you can get into a point of your existence where Earth will basically reap thorns and thistles to make you basically tap out. So you get to a point where you say you don't want to be here anymore and you start making these firm conclusions in your whole consciousness that you don't want to be here anymore so you can stop reincarnating. Now, in the height of the Buddhist traditions and the monk traditions, etc., what they're trying to do is to prevent reincarnation. You see what I mean? And that's so that way you don't come uh, back into the earthly sphere anymore. And to do that, what do they do to do that? They live a life of doing nothing. They don't entertain themselves. They don't get with women. They don't do any of that because that's going to leave some kind of inclination to, hey, I want to go back. You see what I mean? So they spend their lives doing that. Now, that's their philosophy. That's their teaching. That's even their culture. It's not a religion. Mm. Culture is different than religions. People need to get that in their mind real fast. So Uh just because in knowing that, if I don't choose to do that, that doesn't make me wrong or right. You see what I mean? That makes me me. <laughs> you see what I mean? Yeah, and that's where we got to exactly. get with this. We can't, we can't keep isolating certain situations. Well, yeah, but that's wrong because obviously you got to have some kind of fun. Cause, and what you're really hearing from the person is them justifying why they're going to do what they're going to do anyway. You know, it's like, yo, that's not even a part of the <laughs> exactly. conversation. What we were just trying to do is dig into the knowledge to figure out why they're going through this annihilism <laughs> and, and, you know, and this suffering so much. And it's because they want to end all suffering. It's almost like a simple psychological trick. If you don't find yourself tugged left and right anymore by what's going on in certain spaces, you will never remember that space again. You'll find somewhere else. And since we're immortals, this won't be the last time people uh, 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 see, well, maybe it will be, who knows, seven Bovar. But the reality is, is that there, I will live again. I will exist again in some shape, form, or fashion. Energy never perishes. It never dies. So if I want to be more in control of where my next destination, a.k.a. professional reincarnation, if I want to be in control of that, then I need to start letting go of the framework of what five base worlds really consist of because it's never going to change because it's perfect. You get where I'm coming from? See, people, mm. when you tell them perfect, yeah. they, I don't know, they may even see Barbie. Like these people, like they got so much mind control. When, they see, when you tell them perfect, they think white picket fence. They start thinking Range Rovers. They start thinking all sort of beauty in their face and all this kind of thing. But they don't understand that everything in physicality has two sides at least. So whatever you see in daytime you will need to realize the night. And nature has a night. <laughs> That's why, you know, they, I love the new age the way they paint the nature. The nature is great. Yeah, it has that side. It's sustaining us. But there's also the nighttime. And they show you those nighttime animals. They show you those owls. They show you those wolves. They show you those, you know, that side of things to get you aware of what? Not just dark magic and rituals and all that. That's clouding your mind. It's to get you aware of the states and the frequencies that start to come upon a person who is drawing away from the light, meaning that their energy is running down. If you ever talk to someone that starts to get ready to die, then they get this 
frequency embodiment of weakness that they're about to detach. Not, like there's very few people who actually go up out of here like, well, I'm ready to go. Boy, I got the T-shirt, didn't I? Ah, yeah, Grandpa, you did. You don't see people leaving like that. That's only in the ancient <laughs> culture. You see big celebrations when, you know, we got, you know, I'm even taking a few cats with me. Like they killed a couple of, couple of people I was with to make sure they leave with me. You know, that was how they was doing it back mm-hmm. in the day. But now it's like, oh, Jesus, you know, it's all this, you know, they just bought phantoms <laughs> into the room. And, you know, this, it's a mess because the knowledge of how to die was lost. You see what it mean? Now everyone, again, is afraid of this period that just means transition. So then we get back into the real meaning of death, which actually became synonymous with black, which actually meant where everything comes from. So you can see how someone could translate that the way they want to and then be like, so that's why I told you everything comes from us, black people. When this would be very similar to uh, a woman, a female human woman, insisting that she is the only female. When you have female frogs, female birds, women are not the only female. So this, it's the same thing with black. You have to look behind into the frequency and see, well, what also embodies this darkness that when we are slowed down above the speed of light and now everything has gotten dense, we interpret it as this. But when you're in the balance and you're realizing that this is all an alchemical cabinet and for, for you to create, you know, to your, heart, your, to your heart's desire, then you know what weights and measure alchemists to put all of these stuff in to create the potion or passion that you're looking for that you're about to drink so you can go into the next level of your dream as you're plugged into a quantum system that allows you to inhabit more parallels than just one because you're a multiplicit being. But if you get too deep into mm. that and you start playing too much with the drugs or the dragon, DRG, then what happens is you divide yourself as God was divided. They say God was old two-faced. Janus, also known as Deuce, Deuce Pater, also known as Jesus, behold, I do good and evil, two sides to them, then dividing and causing metamorphosis from attempting to emulate the mother, my aunt, who's perfected at doing such things, but then the dividing itself to it became weaker and weaker and could then no longer withstand its own passions and to a point where it became lost. And in that being lost, called out to his mother. So this is, <laughs> this is ancient. You see what I mean? So we ain't the first ones. We ain't the last ones. The system ain't going nowhere. It's always going to be the way that it is because it's experiences. And in the moment that we get into it, actually, that's when we can start governing what the experience is going to be. We go from then being reactive to proactive. You then become the originator of something, not just a creator. A creator is a replicator. You might as well be a cloning machine. When you originate, that means you bought things that nobody has ever seen. And this is true Ooh. fact. That's what we, we know nice. to be what it is. And so it's like, so that's the wheel. That's when the wheel turns in the mind, when all things connect, when what's, when, why, where, how, known as the W, this is a zigzag, is all solved within the mind. So then Alice can leave the, the wilderness, the, the 40 days and 40 nights in the wilderness, the, the Israelites being lost in the wilderness. One can leave the wilderness of the mind, the maze that the Minotaur is in, Molech, Mo, who's Moloch, who's Molech, the son of Solomon and Sheba. You see what I mean? Look at what, you know, what's the name? He put the song, I Know Everything. Nobody understood what the video actually meant. The, what is it called? The Weekend, the guy's name is. So, you know, that was an oh, old tune. Look video. at the video. You know, he's got the horn god and all this. And people are like, yo, what's going on? It's because he's explaining Bilkis. He's explaining the mother of the Nubians who had the hoof foot, who became it symbolically in Kemet as the, the cow faced goddess, who all that tradition of people known as Dravidians, which later on became known as David. When you remove the R, you get Dravid. The difference between Arabic and Hebrew is the L and the R. Then you got these, uh, the real Dravidians who migrated all over the place. They're in Indus Valley. They got the black hair. They're the Aztecs. They're the ones with the dark skin, but the white folks' hair, basically. That's the, that's the balance mm. of the entire biorhythm right there. You see, and they, know, they are known as Nagus, Naga, serpents. So then when you look at the whole book, you know, you realize that actually, I believe, well, it's not even a belief. You can cut some stuff open like these folks so you can see it, that melanin it has its origins within the reptilian species because they have the first strand of DNA. That's why they'll never change. That's what they tell you. Even look at this. The reptilians have the same DNA for a long time. Then when people say, but they were the original people, well, then why can't you sit here and put this together? It's because you're in conflict 
And unless you're looking for harmony, you won't find it. So then in the book, of course, the serpent becomes the enemy because the serpent becomes the origin to most people's existence. So it's, then it gets, becomes a new psychological mind job. You get the Luke, I'm the father story at the end of the whole thing. And then you just they realize that where they left you off because you may not understand your whole process and your whole culture of existence all the way up to 2015. But I would say still, what a great and mighty being. Because that's all I see. Anytime I have an opportunity to recollect it, that's why I do this. That's why I constantly remind myself. That's why I put myself into the position to do this, because I can constantly remind myself now, Seven. Remember, before you go trip on him, <laughs> or before you get in back in the duality, plunge headlong, <laughs> falling angel behavior, using your power for darkness. You see, it doesn't matter how how elated you become if you can't control your attitude and your temper and what we call hatred and envy and, 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 and all that kind of stuff, you're just, you know, you're a tool because anytime we want to, anytime somebody wants to take you as a gun and fire you at somebody else in order to get their polarization moving, then here you come. So it's just, it's like, it's just time now. Like I'm just in, a, I'm in a position right now personally where I can't deal with fake. <laughs> like I can't, uh, uh, harmonize with someone who doesn't want to know the truth. All I can be is the person that if you ask me a question that based on my experience, then I can give you an answer. And in that answer, it's going to be out of integrity that I'm going to do my best to make sure I have the true answer. So if I'm over here playing around with that, though, nine times out of ten, I'm going to become a disinformant. I'm going to start telling lies. I'm going to have to make some stuff up. And generally, the thing that you notice with these kind of people is they're always talking about the same thing over and over and over again. They still on extraterrestrials in the tents. They still on the graves. They still on the crop circles. Or they still on 9-11 and the towers being knocked down by somebody else besides Bin Laden. They still on, you see what I mean? So they're in the past. <laughs> Where I want to be is I want to be present right now. And I can speak on those subjects as how they pertain to us right now, which, you, you know, we can always explore it that way. But that's the thing that we, you know, we got to always incite ourselves to do. So I, I enjoy conversations like the one that we're having now and the connections that we're having right now because there's something deeper going on in our communication in our connection right now that allows me to pull forth the truth that I have to listen to just like everyone else does as far as what we should be doing here so I'm not I'm not I'm the conduit I'm not putting myself in a way of it through me it will run through and I will get a bit of it and then that's, you know, what I need to keep sustaining myself and let myself know what I need to be doing here. Because after all, like, unless I'm going to sit in the room and just talk to myself, which I guess I've been guilty of too at some time, if you are giving any kind of message and nobody is there to listen to that message, how long do you really feel empowered to bring that message forth? So a lot of people will go into that, you know, you don't need anybody and blah, blah, blah. And I get that whole aspect of things. You want to sustain yourself. But by all means, you know, at the end of this, all of this stuff is going to merge back together. I mean, and, and that's yeah, just the truth. Well, connected. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Um, tell the people where they can find you, Seven. Well, they can actually, uh, the site is secretenergy.com. Um, they can tap into the information there. Um, if they want to listen to some of the previous recordings, they can always go to astroquest.com. There's also a Podomatic if they want to put it on their iPhone. And that's what we're doing right now. We even have something we're launching is Karma Free Wealth. That's at spiritex, S-P-I-R-I-T-E-C-H-S dot com. And uh, so, we're, you know, we're massive. We're not just saying, hey, this is what you need to know. We're giving you the ability to bring that about because there is some stuff that we can really get to doing. Because remember, this is just the top part. You know, we can get to working on ourselves. And, you know, we can have a time because we talked about doing a few shows. We can have a time where we just drill into, okay, so now that we got, you know, what's going on right now in real time, you know, how do we get the body back online? Because, you know, some of my teachers were like, yo, you know, I really like what you're saying, but, man, I'm looking in your eyes and you're filthy, meaning that your colon is destroyed. And, you know, based on those bumps, based on your tongue, based on, you know, iridology, you know, you still got Similac with iron inside of your system. Don't think that stuff ever goes nowhere unless you move it. So what we're going to do is we're going to clean you out. We're going to clean those filters of yours, which you call chakras. And then when you're done with the, then, that, then we want to hear what you have to say and how it may change. Because how you perceive things mm. is based on your cleanliness inside of your own temple. <laughs> chakras are eyes. So what happens is, is that when your eye is clouded, you see things clouded. <laughs> When the eye is distorted, 
you see things distorted. So, but when you come into that singularity and that thing lines itself up, then all of a sudden anything that's false, that's why they call it the IRA, because it penetrates. You ever had somebody that had that stare, generally like mother, father, or sometimes uh, the great-grandmother, great-grandmother, actually in most cases, they had that stare that they don't even need to spank you. They just look at you. And that says that, boy, mama. if you don't, girl, if you don't, that's you just mama. know what's coming behind mm-hmm. this. Because that's a penetrating stare. So what they're actually talking about in this is that your third eye has the ability to penetrate all elements, people, places, things, whatever, and make it submit to the truth. <laughs> like, yo, reveal yourself to who you really are. Don't be cloaking yourself in all this glass and all this cotton and fabric and all this. Let me see what you really are. And then because it cannot withstand, it's like why you can't lie to your grandma when she's looking at you like that. Anything in the reality can't keep lying to you about its origin. So this is why when you get into that stage, that's why they call it the realm of truth, because I don't care who's in there. I don't, it could be Melchizedek. It could be all of them, and they are just going to melt away like they're standing in the face of it. That's why I say you cannot see the face and live. What they're saying is you cannot, as being false, thinking you're going to die and all this stuff, stand in the face of truth, which is immortal. <laughs> like you just, you're going to die to who you were. That's why I say you can't look in the face and live. You can't look in the face of truth and then come away from truth the same way you was when you walked in front of truth. No, whoever that was mm. that walked there is dead now. And who comes back yeah. is this new person, and we call that rebirth. So reincarnation can happen now. You don't got to wait until you die to figure out whether you didn't got the parallax right and you didn't figure out what shock would have turned on the boost away from the white light and whatever they talk about lately. You can go right into certain breathing techniques and over-oxygenate your body and trick the body into believing that it's about to pass out when it has enough oxygen to pass the threshold. Then next thing you know, you wake up and you're looking down and your body is still there. Then what? Because mm-hmm. <laughs> there's a then what to that. So imagine this, and this is all I have to say about that. So imagine this. So imagine if our time was supposed to be sp- figuring out, and then what? <laughs> and we're on this side figuring out if Beyonce is really on our side now. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> so, wow. like my brother Liz said, you know, we plan for the weekend, they plan for generations. So, I mean, where are we at right now? So, you know, that's, that's mm. how it is. <laughs> He hit it on the head right there, yo. And it is all about, you know, detoxing and getting your filters together. So I definitely want to uh, plug in my sister, Mama Kimmy Flowers, over at Heal Thyself 360. Um, she has all the herbal remedies that are necessary to get your organs back online. And then you sure. can definitely check me out at mil- com. I have a, a bunch of recipes, you know, that are all clean that will actually help your organs to, you know, um, just recharge and to reset your magnetics because a lot of things that, that you run into, you know, on an elevated plane, you won't be able to comprehend with dirty eyes, just like how you said. So, um, and I've got a thousand deaths on this path. So <laughs> I can definitely resonate with everything that you're saying because it really is all about, uh, you know, resurrection. Yeah. So I appreciate you for coming on the show, Seven. This is, uh, you know, explosive. I think that people really need this. So this should hopefully sway, you know, some of the consciousness of the black people so that, you know, whenever they talk about this black power, they all have something behind it, and they'll know what they're doing with it. And we can start planning for the generation instead of the weekend. So thank you for coming, and we'll definitely have you uh, on the show. Any last words for you, Ali? Uh, not nah, Seven, thank you very much for coming on the show. Uh, everybody, you can check out uh, HannibalGate.com for editorials in this podcast and more. No doubt. And, you know, I guess uh, I definitely uh, thank you for having me on the show. It's it's been a true honor. And, you know, we're about an hour and and 39 minutes. And I did want to answer one really brief question that we had in the beginning of the conversation, just in case someone was already poised, like, okay, so when he goes into that, I know he's going to, you know, slow that open. But there was a question about (laughs) aliens. And what I can, you know, just to not make it a long-winded thing. I want to come back on on, the next episode. And, and, and yeah. go in on that. I, I think I want to do an exclusive great. episode just for that. Okay, so just so everyone knows, you know, when we come back at some point, you know, we're going to be talking about, you know, cleaning out your chakra centers and getting your perception, you know, in, in line, in wholeness. And then we're also going to get into non-phi-based life forms, 
because that's what you would be dealing with what we call an alien. The alien is something that doesn't use the same geometric structure that we're using. So if we happen to see something like that, we recognize it completely as not supposed to be here because it doesn't obey the same kind of geometries and curves that we're normally used to looking at. So that'll be an interesting conversation. Awesome. And how that and how that, that will happens. be interesting. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yes, absolutely. So yeah, that'll definitely help us, you know, as humans to stop fighting each other. You know what I'm saying? To realize that there are different races, and you know, it's pointless for the human race to always be at war with each other when there's a hierarchy of races here that we're not even aware of. So I definitely look forward to that conversation. But, yeah, we're going to bring you back on 7. So uh, we'll be in contact, and we appreciate you for coming on the show. No doubt, no doubt. Thank you for everything, and uh, wholeness and balance vibration, everyone. I'll speak to you soon.